Hello everyone and welcome back to Miss Slovak Storytime. Today I will be reading The Big Cheese. Go ahead and grab your copy of the book so you can read along with me. The Big Cheese, written by Jory John, illustrated by Pete Oswald. They call me cheese, the big cheese. Oh, say it with me, please. The big cheese. Ta-da! You'd better believe it. That's right, folks. I'm the biggest, cheesiest piece of cheddar around. I'm really something to behold. Take a look at me. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Hmm. Have you ever observed a more impressive cheese in your life? It's not just my stature either. It's my presence, my vibe the energy I emanate, the excitement I exude. It's the way I fill a room or a theater or a stadium. Wherever I go, I cause a fuss. Heads turn, jaws drop, gasps are audible. That's why they call me cheese. Oh, say it with me, please. The big cheese, ta-da! You'd better believe it. How did I get such a good or should I say Gouda reputation? Well, I wasn't always a big shot. I grew up on a crowded platter in a tiny kitchen. I was an unremarkable little curd. We lived quiet lives of pasteurization, but I wasn't happy with the status quo. Oh no, I wanted to make a big old name for myself. So I resolved to become a big cheese. I wanted the praise, the cheers, the spotlight, the attention, the ovations, the celebrations. I set to work and before long, I was on the fast track to success. I dressed to impress. I shredded the competition. I stole every show. And then I'd brag nonstop to anybody who would listen. Hey, did you see me score that goal while I was literally yawning? What was the secret to my success? Well, I stuck to the things I was good at. That way, I couldn't possibly fail. Did it get a little boring never trying anything new? I suppose, but it didn't matter as long as everyone agreed that I was, oh say it with me please, the big cheese. Ta-da! But then, one fateful day, I met Wedge. He was new in town and he seemed to be my exact opposite in every way. He was quiet, I was loud. He was shy, I was bold. While I dominated conversations, he kept to himself. I didn't pay much attention at first because why would I? I was too preoccupied with being the center of my universe. But then, without warning, everything changed. Here's what happened. Every summer, our tiny village staged an all-day cheese cathalon Guess who had first place trophies from the last six years? Hmm, oh say it with me please. The big cheese, ta-da! You'd better believe it. This year's opening ceremony started at 5 a.m. sharp. I was fully primed and prepared to prevail. First up was a foot race and I zipped into the lead. Within seconds though, there was someone on my heels. I could hear his breath the pitter-patter of his agile feet. It was Wedge. I could not believe it. Oh, he was fast. Not just fast, but skilled, disciplined. He paced himself. We were neck and neck for most of the race, but when I slipped on a rogue pebble, Wedge swerved, sped up, and beat me by a nose. A cheese nose. For the first time, I'd come in second place. Oh, the indignity! But there was no time to sulk because the next leg of the competition had already started. It was a game of chess. Before I could blink or think, Wedge had taken my king in four moves, and while I was busy protesting to the judges, he had already moved on. The following events were a blur of loss after loss after humiliating loss. Hat making, sheep herding, bread buttering. It turned out that Wedge was quietly excellent at everything. Even when he won though, he didn't gloat. He was so humble. It was odd. It was disconcerting. 
It was absolutely baffling. Finally, I watched in dismay as Wedge trounced me one last time and the day came to a bitter end. Well, bitter for me at least. I went through every possible emotion. Uh, no! Boo! <laughs> Until I'd finally exhausted myself. And as I lay in the muck, I heard a thunderous voice making the dreaded announcement. First place goes to newcomer Wedge Wedgeman. The crowd roared its approval. What had just happened? It was honestly hard to fathom. I closed my eyes. Suddenly, inexplicably, I felt a sense of calm come over me. I listened to my breathing, to the steady beating of my heart. Yes, I had lost, again and again and again. But after all that, I actually felt okay, relieved even. I suddenly knew that my world wasn't going to crumble. I picked myself up, I dusted myself off, and I headed home. Before too long, I spotted Wedge. He wasn't busy celebrating or bragging. He was just watching the stream go by. He looked content. We chatted for a bit. It turned out that Wedge had a fascinating life story. I found myself getting caught up in a great conversation. A conversation that wasn't all about me. Huh. That day, I realized something. Maybe it didn't matter if I wasn't the best at everything. In fact, perhaps it was healthy for me to lose for once. And sure, my ego was bruised in the short term, but over time I gained some perspective on what's really important. Losing taught me about empathy and humility. It showed me that I'd become so focused on winning that I was missing out on the joy of participating. And it helped me see that I can live with defeat, even if I get a bit angry or frustrated at first. These days, I'm trying not to lose worry about whether I win or lose. I don't even have to impress everyone all the time. I let others have the spotlight. And I've taken up some new hobbies, just for me. Yes, I'm trying to be a better wheel of cheddar. So now, when I brag about something, well, I mostly brag about my friends. Whoa, did you see that? What a move! Because it turns out that anyone from a crumb of gorgonzola to a fleck of feta to an unassuming wedge of brie can be... Oh, say it with me, please. The big cheese. You'd better believe it. The... And thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow along for more stories. Bye!